cord there, bud. Did you? Oh, it's... <laughs> Good How does this thing work? Good job. <laughs> Didn't screw that one up, did I? <laughs> Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. And today, between rainstorms or rain... Band, whatever. Bands or whatever you want to call them, we are going to install the hammer-built accessory bracket, I guess. So what it consists of, Jill wants to open it up. We ended up buying the accessory bracket, which is right here, the antenna holder or flag holder as we're gonna do, and the rotopack equipment. Now we do have the main part and we do have an extension. There is one thing with this setup is, go ahead and close it, or actually leave it open real quick. Depending on where you put this, this right here, the accessory, with whatever you have connected is gonna touch this. Now, they do make a bracket or a different shock for this that limits it to 90 degrees. We ended up going with the RTR version, which actually limits it to 80 degrees. We don't need to open it wide because we do have the dogs in here and the smaller area for them to jump out, the better, because it's more control of where they're gonna go, so. Yeah, this is probably like about 80. Yeah, so here you go. It does come with all the hardware, uh, really nice. Let me see. So first things first. The accessory bracket. Now, if you guys look, there's four sets of holes on the bottom, four sets of holes on the top. These right here, you can go, depending on the size of your tire, now the closest I can get to the tire is right there. But I mean, that's right on the tire. So I would end up going right there, or I could go further out, depending on what you have in here. Now, we do have the carriage bolts for that, which is gonna make this pretty flat. I don't need it that far out. Um, so I will put it right there. Joe wants to hold the extra bolts so I don't have a bunch of them. So these are the bolts that we're using. These are stainless steel, I believe. Yeah. Because we live in Florida where everything has salt in it, including the rain. We have one. Now he does it in a crisscross pattern, that way it's even. Yeah. There's no twisting and bending. Have it. I'm working on jet engines forever. You really do it by a crisscross pattern. Now for the next portion. This is the antenna holder. So it's going on this side right here. You got two there. The antenna will go in this area here. So for those of you that's not too savvy on off-roading, the reason why you have to have a flag is that way people can see you. <laughs> yeah, especially in like sand dunes and stuff, you really need to have a flag that way when somebody comes over the hill, they see you. Florida is not very hilly, but you do have a lot of brush Dense vegetation, and debris. Yeah. And depending on where you go, it's good to have it. Like old Florida has a lot of hills and stuff you go over or manufactured hill type obstacles where you can't see somebody on the other side so this so yeah the more obnoxious the color the less they'll blend in i'm just saying it's <laughs> a good way to put it so this is just a flag i picked up off of off of uh amazon, with amazon it. yeah so it was nothing major My suggestion is put that on or whatever you have on before you put this on, but it's not that big of a deal. Ooh, okay. not much of a pain to get to. This whole system is actually pretty easy. I'm just glad it's a really quick install. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, so like I was saying, you have the carriage bolts like this. 
So if you guys know, don't know what carriage bolts are, uh, they're flat on the bottom. They use this uh, square locking feature to go in so it won't turn. Now this goes for any system you put on here. No matter what you do, you can use the carriage bolts to mount it as well as the other systems that are out there that utilize the mounting points that they actually put in this thing. So it's nice that they have a versatility of not just using a certain mounting uh, system, but multiple. Or if you fabricate something yourself, you have the ability to do it. Put all the stuff in before you put it together. <laughs> Probably be easier, but like I said, if you want to take this off and put it back on again, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go inside real quick and get a ratchet for that. Okay. Okay. So after we brought the rotopax out here, we did realize that this need to be horizontal rather than vertical. So we did re uh, reposition it and now we're just going through tightening. My suggestion, if you're going to put anything on there, uh, put it on before you put the bracket on. It is a tight fit depending on which position you did. I put it the closest to this just, just so uh, there's no issue. So now we do have two rotor packs, but we're just going to demonstrate it with this one. There, there you go. go. And then use oh. this to lock it the rest of the way. Now, like I was saying before, let me get all the stuff off of here so it doesn't fall. When installing this system, they do have a way to limit the door opening. And the reason I say that is because this right here, when it comes back, it will contact the light. So they yeah, do have a way up here. Yeah. The closer you so get. Right there, it contacts. So yeah, I mean, you just can't like slam your gate open because you'll end up busting out a light. <laughs> so any other company, the only other company I know that has something like this is RTR, but the system is extremely expensive and it does the same thing. They have jerry cans for it and they have a metal bracket uh, that hangs just like this one does. It's gonna come in the same contact with the light as well. That's why they have a limiting brace that actually connects underneath that shock we showed you we have one we're going to put it on this limit it to 80 percent rather than 105 or 120 however wide this opens because we don't need the access like that we're not going to load a lot of stuff in here other than the dogs dogs don't need a wide gate to get into so uh last but not least our uh, antenna right where's the antenna at it's on the table. Oh, it's right here. Oh, not on the table. I had brought it out. For a big, for a big goofy antenna, I'm just gonna put one in there. We'll go from there. Joe wants to hold that. Now this does come with another extension, which makes it really tall. Way too tall. Uh, if I was out in the desert, yeah, in Florida, if I have it that big, it means I'm in the urban area and I'm driving. I don't know. I think we need to put it on just for size comparison. The thing about this is it's nice and. I mean that right there is not bad. Size comparison? <laughs> We're gonna add this on to show you. To show you just how tall this is. For all you desert guys out there that do this. Uh, this thing is like huge. Moab. I've seen that at Moab a lot, as a lot of people uh, out there at the mountains and hills and crap like that. Oh yeah, you definitely have to do that there. Moab's got a lot of blind spots. Yeah. 
being over in Saudi driving around in the desert, we had these on some of the uh, some of the Hummers when we were driving around. So not during wartime. You definitely don't want to be seen during that. But Can on a regular basis, <laughs> no, on a regular basis, driving around the areas. So the bases were still on Saudi, like on the desert. They still had like a lot of desert around it. So driving around that. You had to have a big flag on it or else come in contact with somebody else driving the other way. Ouch. That's probably not a good idea. I don't know. I think they're overcompensating, <laughs> but yes, uh, that right there is the full length of it. That is way too tall for Florida. Shit. <laughs> that is awesome. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So bad. So this will end up staying in the vehicle. Uh, it is quick disconnect, which is really nice. I don't have to worry about it, you know, unbolting it or anything like that. It's just a quick disconnect for when you want to go out and have fun. Putting this on, on the other hand, takes a little bit. Yeah, a lot of turning involved. <sighs> nice thing about it, it has uh, washers, uh, I'll say O-rings, as we call it, right there. So when you do tighten this down, it doesn't vibrate free. So here you go. There you go. And I'll tell you this right now, these brackets are absolutely thick as hell. They're, they're stout. They're not gonna go anywhere. They're not gonna bend very easily. They may bend if you put a lot of pressure on it, but that right there is pretty good. Pretty good. So, got this. We will not put the other piece on. It's just a white one for water. So this one, obviously red for gas. I do have a white one for the water, which that's why when we go, we're going to limit to go out. My new to water, not for drinking, it's no, for the car. It's for the <laughs> car drink. to wash your hands or say, for instance, the dogs get dirty to wash their feet off before they jump in the car or whatever. Uh, that's all it's for. So I hope you like the video. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, this is actually something we've been wanting to do for a while. We <laughs> one thing after another comes priority right now. This is our biggest priority. This is her dream Bronco, and I want to make sure that this thing is set up very nicely. We do plan on doing some graphics on the side. We do plan on getting a roof rack from Gobi, Gobi Racks, uh, Gobi themselves, and get that all set up for going off-roading and going camping, hopefully, this summerish, fallish. Probably fall next winter because I sure as hell I'm not going to go camping in 95 bazillion degree heat with, with a thousand percent yeah. humidity and mosquitoes the size of eagles. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll just agree <laughs> with that. I am a mosquito <laughs> magnet. He doesn't get bit, but dude, I am like a super buffet. <laughs> uh, yeah. She gets eaten up pretty quick. Um, anyways, I hope you guys like this. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and... We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.